Hello, and welcome to another episode of DAX in 10. Hi, and welcome to the first episode of DAX in 10. Uh, the focus of this series is going to be on DAX fundamentals and functions and as the title suggests uh, I'm going to try and keep each episode to around about 10 minutes in length. Um, I'm going to be deliberately light on detail in this series, uh, instead I'm aiming to give those of you who are new to DAX uh, a pointer on how to get started and for those of you who are a bit more experienced hopefully a useful reference for the future. Uh, I'll post links to more detailed reference material on the notes section of each episode. So, I'm going to kick things off today by doing a brief introduction to the DAX language, uh, looking at what it is, uh, why it's important, and what you need to know to help you get started. So, what exactly is DAX? Well, as an acronym, DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions, and it's the functional language used with Power Pivot in Excel, uh, the tabular model in SQL Server Analysis Services, and Power BI. Uh, for the purposes of this series, I'll be using it with Power BI, but the concepts and functions that we'll be looking at and learning about will apply to all three products. Um, the only difference between them is their user interfaces. Okay, put simply, DAX is a collection of functions, operators and constants that you use in formulas and expressions uh, with the data you have in your data model. Uh, it's important as it allows you to extend the data you have through the creation of new calculated columns and measures or, or calculated fields as they're now known. Uh, in addition, it can work across related data and it allows you to gain powerful insights and carry out much more powerful analysis than you'd be able to do otherwise. Uh, so perhaps if we take an example of this, um, with DAX it's possible to calculate uh, something like the percentage growth of, of across products using a range of different dates. Or you can do something like looking at the performance of sales for the current period uh, and compare to the same period last year. To gain a good understanding of DAX, there are three fundamental concepts that you really need to learn. Uh, that's the syntax, uh, the DAX functions, and DAX context. Uh, whilst there are other concepts, uh, these are the three fundamental ones that you, you really do need to learn to be able to use DAX effectively. Uh, DAX expressions recognize a range of data types which include integer, decimal, currency, dates, uh, booleans, strings, and binary objects. Most of the time DAX will implicitly convert values based on the needs of a current function. Uh, for example, using a concatenation connector between two integer values will actually result in a string. Okay, let's get started by looking at the first con concept, uh, which is syntax. And we'll start by using an example of a simple DAX measure. Uh, in this example, we start with the name of the measure, which is total sales. And next we have the equal sign operator that indicates the beginning of the formula. Then we have the DAX function itself, which in this example is the sum function. Uh, this is an aggregator function that basically takes the column that's being passed in as an argument and then adds up all the numbers in that column. The parenthesis surrounds uh, the argument or arguments being passed to a function, and all functions require at least one argument. Uh, however, many will take more than that, and you can have functions nested within arguments. Uh, in this example, we're passing just one argument to the sum function, which is a reference to the sales amount column in the sales table. Uh, the next fundamental concept that you will need to learn about is DAX functions. Uh, and these are essentially predefined formula that perform calculations using the values that get passed in as arguments. Uh, arguments can be text, numbers, uh, column references, they can be other nested functions, they can be formulas, or they can be expressions. Uh, there are a number of categories of DAX functions, and these include logical, mathematical, statistical, date time, and time intelligence. As you can see from the example we just used, uh, using DAX is similar to using formulas in Excel, and, and there, are, there, there is a considerable overlap in the way you use them. However, there are also a lot of differences, and many functions are unique to DAX. Uh, many of them work differently to Excel functions. Uh, for example, DAX includes functions that, instead of returning a single value, will return an entire table. However, if you've used Excel formulas before, uh, you're in a pretty good place to start using DAX. Uh, the last fundamental concept that you need to understand is DAX context. Uh, it's probably the most important and the most difficult of the three concepts to fully understand, uh, and it's pretty difficult to explain without going into uh, some depth. 
I'll leave the detailed stuff for later episodes, but briefly, there are two types of context with index, the row context and the filter context. When you use a column reference retrieve a value of a column for a given row, you need a way to tell DAX which row to use. In other words, you need a way to define what is the current row of a table. And it's this concept of a current row that is the row context. You have a row context whenever you iterate over a table, either using an iterator function uh, like SumX or when you create a calculated column where the expression is evaluated for each row of the table. The filter context is the set of filters that were applied to your data model before the evaluation of a DAX expression begins. And if the filter context is empty, uh, a DAX expression will iterate over all rows of a table. Uh, if on the other hand, the filter context is not empty, it, uh, it limits the rows in the table that the DAX expression can iterate over. So to help clarify this a bit better, let's take a look at an example of a function uh, to show you how the filter context operates. Uh, we'll start off by creating a new measure here, uh, which we'll call store sales. And for this, we're gonna use the calculate function. Uh, the calculate function evaluates an expression which is passed in as an argument uh, in a context that is modified by the specified filters. So in this example, uh, total sales is another measure which we created in the previous example. Uh, and the total sales measure has the formula sum of the sales amount column in the sales table. Uh, a comma separates the first expression argument from the filter argument and uh, the filter argument provides the row context. Each row of this column specifies a channel, uh, such as store, online, etc. And the particular value store is, is the one we're using for the filter context. And this formula ensures that only sales values defined by the total sales measure are calculated uh, where the rows in the channel name column have a value of store. Okay, so let's switch over to Power BI now and do this for real. Um, we want to create the first measure which is total sales so let's, uh, select the sales table new measure total sales and that's equal to the sum of sales amount in the sales table gives us our first measure well let's just show that on the desktop here as a chart so we have total sales um, and then the channel table is related to the sales table and we have a quick look at that there we can see that the channel table has a relationship with the sales table so let's uh, split that by channel name and let's show the values there the data labels so we can see there for, for store sales, we've got a value of 4.9 billion. And we actually now create a new measure uh, that just shows those sales for, for store. Let's create a new measure. Let's have store sales equals, and then we use the calculate function. We pass total sales in as the first expression. And now what that's going to do with this is, is it's going to iterate over the sales table and it's going to pick out the total sales measure. But we're going to put in a filter context here. Uh, and, we, so, and we're going to filter it by uh, those that are for the channel name uh, store. So let's select the table, channel, channel name. And this is where we uh, apply a filter context uh, so it's only gonna so what it's gonna do is it's gonna go away and it's gonna iterate over that table but it's only gonna bring back uh, values for total sales where the channel name of the related channel table is equal to store and then we can show that we just bring the store sales uh, measure across and I'll just make that into a card and then we can see there with the 4.85 billion store sales uh, equates to the 4.9 there we have on our chart. And then I can go across and filter using the chart where well, that doesn't uh, change the store sales value that we're showing there. Okay, let's summarize what we've looked at so far. Uh, DAX is a collection of functions, operators and constants. Uh, and in order to be able to gain a good understanding of DAX, you need to learn three fundamental concepts 
Uh, we need to learn about the syntax, DAX functions, and DAX context. Uh, to be honest, DAX does require a bit of effort to learn well. Uh, and to quote Alberto Ferrari, who is a leading figure in the DAX world, uh, DAX is simple, but it's not easy. However, along with this series, there's a ton of resources available. Much of it is freely available on the net, and I will include links to more detailed reference material in the notes section of each episode of this series. As with lots of things, the best way to learn DAX is to use it. Uh, you can get started by downloading Power BI Desktop, uh, pulling in some of your own data or downloading some sample data, and you can start creating some of your own calculated columns and measures using DAX functions. Well, that's a wrap for this introductory episode. If you enjoyed this introduction to DAX, uh, then please hit the thumbs up button. And if you want, why not leave a comment? If you want to be the first to find out when new episodes of this series are available, then please consider subscribing to the Data World channel. That's it for now. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and helping you to learn DAX with DAX in 10.